In this video, we're gonna cover the fight between the Demon Slayers and Kokushibo. Before the battle starts, we see Morichiro running with Gyome while they're trying to find Muzan. Suddenly, a part of the Infinity Castle moves and takes Morichiro to a different room, while Morichiro screams at Gyome to not mind him and keep moving forward. Suddenly, we see Morichiro in the same room with Kokushibo. The atmosphere is tense as Kokushibo faces an opponent he never would have imagined in his wildest dreams. A descendant of his own blood now stands before him, drawing his sword in a bid to end the terror of Upper Moon One, once and for all. Kokushibo glances inside the body of Morichiro with his transparent world ability, while Morichiro wanders about the pattern of calmness and dignity in Kokushibo's body language. Muichiro realizes that the Upper Moon One is a former Demon Slayer and goes for his sword, but his body refuses to fight due to the terror of the demon he's facing. Kokushibo informs Muichiro that he's a descendant of the family he left behind. Hearing this shocks Muichiro, but he immediately gathers his strength and calms himself down. Muichiro rushes toward Kokushibo using his second form of mist breathing, but isn't able to land a single blow. Kokushibo congratulates Muichiro on refining his swordsmanship to such a level at the young age of 14. He carries on with his rant and credits all of Muichiro's strength to the Tsugikuni bloodline, which, according to him, is the source of his power. This angers Muichiro, as he states that not a single drop of his blood remains in him after hundreds of years. All while invoking the Demon Slayer mark that appears on his face, Kokushibo notices the mark just as Muichiro unleashes the seventh form and gets lost in the haze. Muichiro dashes towards Kokushibo in an attempt to decapitate him. However, Kokushibo cuts off his arm and stabs Muichiro through a pole. Kokushibo offers Muichiro a chance to become a demon just like himself and tries to stop the bleeding from his arm so that he doesn't die of blood loss. As the conversation continues, we spot Ginya staking out a position behind one of the pillars waiting for a chance to strike down Kokushibo. As Ginya moves his gun to kill Kokushibo, he immediately appears behind him and cuts off his arm. While Ginya goes for his sword, Muichiro spots the conundrum and tries to free himself. Kokushibo cuts off Ginya's other arm before he could reach for his sword as well. Ginya starts falling towards the floor, but before he could hit the ground, Kokushibo slices off his remaining body in half. Muichiro fails to pull out his sword while Kokushibo notices that Ginya isn't dead yet. He reveals that he faced a demon-eating slayer about 300 years ago, but he died after his torso was separated. As Kokushibo goes for his head, Sanemi arrives just in time to save his brother. Sanemi restates that Ginya is really pathetic, but he loves him all the same nonetheless, which reminds him of the time when Tanjiro informed him about his brother's love for him. Sanemi apologizes to Ginya and goes on to attack Kokushibo, which forces him to unsheath his sword at last. Sanemi remarks that Kokushibo's blade is unimaginably ugly as they stand in a sword lock. Kokushibo unleashes the fifth form of his moon breath, which Sanemi counters with his wind-breathing third form. Kokushibo remarks that Sanemi's physical capabilities are at their peak, which isn't bad for an opponent, while Sanemi barely keeps his cool. Sanemi contemplates that the slashes produced by Kokushibo contain many slashes in them, which are proving to be quite a hindrance for him as they warp in themselves. Sanemi is shocked because Kokushibo's strength just keeps climbing with every hit he unleashes. However, this turns on Sanemi's killer instincts, as he declares that Kokushibo really is a demon worth killing. Sanemi tries to dash forward with the second form of wind breathing and faints an attack, which forces Kokushibo to block with his sword onto a lock again. However, this time, Sanemi sneaks in a strike using his foot, which holds Ginya's sword, which Kokushibo barely manages to avoid. The fight continues and Kokushibo recalls a nostalgic feeling in his mind as Sanemi's the one who's been able to keep up with him after all these years of fighting. Kokushibo suddenly attacks Sanemi with the sixth form and cuts him all over his body. As Kokushibo tires of monologue once again, his pulse increases due to Sanemi's rare blood. Sanemi attacks Kokushibo, ignoring all of his injuries and stating that the smell of his blood must be making him go insane with hunger. With a sense of nostalgia, remembering how he lost many of his comrades and rose to the rank of a Hashira, Sanemi unleashes another sixth form slash, which Kokushibo manages to avoid. Kokushibo is shocked due to Ginya's resilience, as he managed to stop the bleeding by himself and is flexing his muscles continuously so that his guts don't spill out of his body. Kokushibo refuses to believe that a human is capable of such tenacity, 
as he goes on to dodge several upcoming attacks of the Wind Hashira. As Sanemi moves on with his attacks while barely being able to keep his body together, Kokushibo spots an opening and kicks his sword right onto the ground. Kokushibo then proceeds to finish Sanemi once and for all, while the latter dives deep into his memories. He remembers how, during his first Hashira meeting, he questioned Kaguya, who thought of him more than his own child. But after Kaguya's sacrifice, he owes him the head of at least the upper moon. As Kokushibo's blade reaches Sanemi's head, he reveals Ginya's gun and shoots flesh seeds out of it, which Kokushibo dodges by an inch. Sanemi tries to make room for himself while Kokushibo unleashes another moon slash. However, a wall breaks down behind him and a new slayer reveals himself. Gyome has apparently found his way to challenge Kokushibo for the title of the strongest in the Taosho era. Gyome stands between Kokushibo and Sanemi, while instructing the latter to stitch up his stomach wound. Sanemi apologizes for his weakness, as Gyome begins to spin his Kusari Gama. Kokushibo peeks inside Gyome's body and is exhilarated that he's about to fight a swordsman of his caliber. He states that it's been 300 years since he's faced a slayer as strong as him. Gyome starts spinning his Kusari Gama even more violently, which changes the direction of the wind in the mansion as all the air starts seeping in towards a mini tornado created by him. Gyome attacks Kokushibo with the iron ball attached to his Kusari Gama, which is swiftly dodged by the demon. As Kokushibo moves to counter the ball, Gyome throws in his axe as well, which surprises Kokushibo. Kokushibo manages to duck under the axe as well, but after Gyome steps onto his chain and uses the second form of his breath of rock, Kokushibo is forced to retreat a few steps back. As soon as Kokushibo lands, Gyome wraps his chain around the demon's neck, which he isn't able to slice through because it's made of the highest quality scarlet crimson iron. He manages to evade capture by slipping under the chains and tries to close in on Gyome. As he deems the weapon useless at close range, Kokushibo slashes down Gyome, but he manages to evade the attack by jumping up. He then wraps Kokushibo's blade in half, which he instantly regenerates due to it being a part of his mass. Gyome gets slashed on his face as he reveals his final weapon, the acquired Demon Slayer marks on his forearms. Meanwhile, Morichiro frees himself of the impalement and concludes that he'll soon die of blood loss. He tries to stop his bleeding as he spots a cut down Ginya, who unwillingly asks for his help. Morichiro promises him that they're both gonna fight till the end. Kokushibo reveals the significance of the Demon Slayer mark to Gyome and pities him for his eventual demise. He cites that as he's already progressed over the age of 25, he might die this very night. Gyome reveals that all of that is old news and informs Kokushibo that he doesn't care about preserving his life, but rather getting rid of monstrosities like him, even if it's at the cost of his own life. Kokushibo then mildly hints toward Gyome defecting to the demon side in order to protect himself, a proposition that makes Gyome's blood boil. However, Gyome states that what Kokushibo just said is untrue, as there's one person who lived well beyond 25, even with the Demon Slayer mark. Thinking of this person makes Kokushibo tremble in fear, and he attacks Gyome instantly out of spite. Meanwhile, Sanemi stitches up his wound and realizes that he's summoned a mark as well. He joins in on the assault on Kokushibo, making him believe that all Hashiras of the Taosho era are marked. Kokushibo retreats as Gyome and Sanemi stare him down. As the fight continues, Morichiro attaches Ginya's body back together and gives him some strands of Kokushibo's hair to eat. Ginya's body starts to heal, but he also realizes that he can now directly hear Muzan's messages to Kokushibo, which terrify him. Kokushibo battles against the combined assault of Sanemi and Gyome, contemplating that the two could be the strongest among all the Hashiras. However, he's thoroughly impressed with Gyome's might because, even due to his disability, he's able to perceive motion through other senses and fight on par with them. Kokushibo decides to go for Sanemi's katana and break it from the hilt. However, with the power of the mark, he flips the sword and smashes it down. He tries to slash Kokushibo down but manages to get part of his hair, and he dodges the attack. Gyome joins in on the attack as well, and with a combined effort, they're able to slash Kokushibo's ear. The two of them combine their breathing forms and attack the demon's body simultaneously. However, as they turn back to finish their assault, blood starts to pour out of their bodies, revealing that they got hit while attacking. Kokushibo's kimono gets torn due to the attack, but he reveals a hideous form of his flesh katana, 
while stating that he's gonna end the two. Two of Sanemi's fingers fall off his hand due to the result of the attack. However, he refuses to be a burden to Gyomei and decides to keep attacking. Kokushibo unleashes an extended version of his eighth breath, and the two pillars end up taking severe damage and many minor cuts. Sanemi gets immobilized and he orders Gyomei to leave him and head for the demon. However, as Kokushibo is about to land the final blow on the wind Hashira, a revived Marichido arrives and saves him. Meanwhile, Genya hides behind a wall and contemplates a plan to prove his usefulness. This is when he remembers Tanjiro's words about potential and how he cut down the upper six. He decides to eat a severed part of Kokushibo's sword, which Gyomei broke off a little earlier and increase his strength. Meanwhile, the three Hashira struggle with battling Kokushibo as he keeps revealing new breathing forms and attacks. Gyomei's attacks get shut down even before he initiates them due to Kokushibo's transparent world. Gyomei believes that such strength is attainable for humans as well and tries to focus all of his strength in his unjudging eyes. Suddenly, Gyomei gains access to the transparent world's abilities and peeks into the body of Kokushibo through his blindness. Muichiro decides to prove his usefulness before he passes out due to the loss of blood, and all the Hashiras rush in to attack Kokushibo. The demon tries to get rid of all three swordsmen in a single slash. However, Sanemi scores a hit on him with the help of Gyomei. Before Kokushibo could process this, Morichiro broke through Kokushibo's combination as well and impales him with his sword, while his leg got cut off in the process. As Kokushibo picks up his sword once again, Yomei rushes in to finish him. But suddenly a transformed Genya reveals himself and takes aim at Kokushibo. The flesh seeds from Genya's shotgun impale themselves all around Kokushibo's body. Suddenly Genya's gun starts changing form, and roots sprout out of the flesh seeds trapping Kokushibo and Muichiro in a single place. As Gyomei approaches him, Kokushibo tastes fear for the first time in 400 years. He gets reminded of the time he faced an aged Yorichi, where he struck him down one last time, almost killing him in the process. This feeling of helplessness enrages Kokushibo, and he sprouts a number of blades all throughout the body, which blow away the roots and impale Muichiro once again with his sword still inside Kokushibo. The slash from his emerging blade spread wide and cut Genya's body in the middle into two pieces. Sanemi suddenly jumps over Kokushibo for a surprise attack, but the demon instantly goes for an attack as well. Muichiro concludes that he cannot let Gyomei or Sanemi die at any cost. He pours all of his will into his sword, which starts to turn scarlet. The insides of Kokushibo start burning, as his ability to regenerate is lowered significantly. Sanemi's sword reaches Kokushibo's neck, but he resists it. Genya, with only a portion of his strength, activates a flesh seed once again, which immobilizes Kokushibo. Gyomei attacks Kokushibo as well with his iron mace on his neck, making him bend. Kokushibo remembers Yorichi one last time before Sanemi strikes the final blow on the Phenom, decapitating him. Gyomei and Sanemi realize that Kokushibo is not going to die from the decapitation as he's gained some form of immunity. Sanemi curses him and promises to rip him to shreds as both he and Gyomei attack him. As they continue the attack, Kokushibo regenerates a monstrous head back onto his neck. Sanemi decides not to hold back anything and swings his sword in midair. Kokushibo suddenly spots his monstrous appearance in the reflection made from Sanemi's sword and questions if that's really what he wanted. He thinks about his brother's pity for his monstrous appearance from 400 years ago, as Gyomei's Kusarigama smashes his body into smithereens. Kokushibo realizes that he cannot use his blood demon art or regenerate his body. He reminisces about his time with his brother, and as his last words, states that all he ever wanted was to be like him. Thus, a life full of 400 years worth of jealousy and agony comes to a halt and perishes, with Kokushibo's, or better yet, Machikatsu Tsugikuni's defeat by those he once betrayed.